Okay, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at developing a algorithmic trading strategy. And I'm going to start by saying that this video is for educational purposes only. It is not meant as investment advice. And the strategy we're going to be taking a look at is sometimes referred to as a momentum strategy. And it's, it's kind of an ill-defined term. It can mean lots of things. But in general, we're going to be looking for security or securities that are moving in a specific direction. So maybe we are going to do a screen and just start with securities that are above their 50-day moving average or some other metric that we have researched. All right. And since these things are moving in a direction, this is often called a trend following strategy. And you can make money as a security moves up and as it moves down. All right. But whatever you're going to call this thing, you're going to need to do some research to figure out what are some potential trading signals that may be profitable. All right. And in general, you want signals that are generalizable out to a number of securities. All right. We're going to start by just looking at a single security here and see if we can find something that has potential. All right. So to start with, I'm going to go ahead and import the libraries we're going to be using. All right. And I'm going to make this notebook available on a GitHub link and you'll find that in the description of the video. So with our environment set up, we're going to go ahead and download some data. And I'm going to be using the Yahoo Finance API, but there are lots of services out there. Some of them are free. Some of them you have to pay for. Uh, I'm going to be go ahead and using the gold ETF. So a exchange traded fund that tracks the price of gold. And so I'm just going to set a variable, call it GLD, which is the symbol for that ETF. And then I'm going to use the pandas data reader and get data Yahoo. Okay, I'm just going to pass in the symbol and it does have to be an uppercase. Uh, you can customize the data that you draw by putting in an optional start and end date. I'm just going to leave it at the default, which should give us about five years of data. All right. And then once it's downloaded, we'll just take a quick look at the first few rows. All right. So there it is. And yep, it went back five years and got uh, the daily price action for the gold ETF. Okay. All right. I'm going to start adding columns to my data frame. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a day counter so we can keep track of uh, what day in the time series we're at. And uh, I'm just going to use NumPy and make a range array here that matches uh, the number of observations in our gold data frame. Okay, and then I'm going to add that to the data frame. Once again, we'll just take a look at what that does. And you can see that, okay, it starts with a sequence of days. All right, I probably want to rearrange it so that the day comes right after the date. All right, and I don't need the adjusted close or the volume for what we're going to be doing. All right, for some securities, you'll, you'll want the adjusted close. If they've had a split, uh, it will be more meaningful if you use adjusted close so we're going to go ahead and drop in our columns. All right. And I'll give it the list of columns I want to drop. Okay. And I want that to happen permanently. So I will tell it to do that in place. Okay. So there's our revised data frame. All right. And then to rearrange the columns, we're going to make a copy of the data frame. And then we're just going to tell it the order that we want the columns in. All right. So we're ready with the preliminaries here. And uh, if we want, we can take a look at the, the form of the data, right? So I can run an info on the data frame. And this will also tell me how many observations I have. All right. And it will tell me all the data types here. All right. So they're all numerical. All right. And, and then we'll just start adding columns to the data. All right. So uh, like I said at the beginning, we're going to try this momentum strategy. To implement that, we're going to have to look for some kind of signal. And the signal I'm going to use here is going to be a moving average. And actually, I'm going to use two moving average 
a slow and a fast one where we're going to get into a trade when the fast one crosses above the slow one and we're going to exit and go short when uh, the fast one crosses below the slow one. All right. So for this strategy, we're always going to be in a trade either long or short. All right. So for some strategies, maybe you want to just look at being long. Maybe you want to just look at being short. All right. And uh, keep in mind that, yeah, this is a model and that there is going to be some variation uh, in real life. So if even something that looks very promising may not actually perform in real life the way it does in your model. So to add the moving averages, I'm going to just add a column and the fast one is going to be a nine day moving average. And I'm going to base it on closing price. And I'm just going to hang this rolling method off the end, tell it how many days. And then after that, I'm going to hang an aggregator off the end. All right. So there are any number of aggregators you can hang off here. All right. So I could put the standard deviation, the median, all right, some percentile if I want. I'm going to just use the rolling average or the moving average. And then I'm going to just copy all this to duplicate it for the slow moving average. And uh, we'll make that a 21 day. So one trading month. Okay. And then once I do that, I'm going to take a look at gold about down where this moving average should start. All right. So it's not going to start immediately. It's going to be lagged by nine and 21 days. So I'm going to start looking at the 20th to say the 25th rows there. Okay. So we can see that it starts here and it looks like the 21 day moving average is starting on the 21st day, I can back up a little bit just to confirm that. All right. So it is using 21 days of average, All right? The problem with this though, is that it sort of implies that we have some kind of look ahead information. All right. So to calculate the moving average on closing price for 21 days, I'm going to have to wait until the stock market closes on that 21st day to actually do the calculation. All right. So the way this thing is set up, it's implying that we already know the closing price uh, as the day starts. All right. So I'm going to roll these forward. Both of them have this problem. So I'm going to roll them forward by one day with this shift method in pandas. All right. So now we see that that 21 day moving average doesn't start until day 22. All right. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is add a signal column. And uh, this is going to tell us when we're going to be in a trade long or when we're going to be in a trade short. All right. So I'm just going to call it signal. And uh, to do this, I'm going to use the MP where, right? Basically works like an if function in Excel. And I'm going to look at gold and I'm going to look at where nine day, all right, is greater than the 21 day. And I'm going to put a one there. All right. So if you wanted a long only strategy, you could do this. And if it's not above, I'm going to put a zero. All right. But since we are going to be always in a trade, I'm going to add the short signal. All right. So we'll flip around the inequality there. And when we're below the 21 day, we're going to be short. So that's a negative one. All right. And then otherwise, I'm just going to leave whatever's in that signal there. All right. And then I'm going to just drop off the rows that we can't really use. So everything up to uh, day uh, 22, basically. All right. So I'm going to. All right. And I'm going to have to do that in place as well to make it permanent. And then we'll just take a look at the first few rows again. All right. So there they are starting at day 22. And it looks like we should be long. Next thing we need to do is figure out, OK, uh, what is the performance of gold? And we're going to have to compare sort of the buy and hold performance with our system performance. All right. So first of all, I'm going to add a return column. All right. And that's going to be an instantaneous rate of return. So I'm going to use the MP log and I'm going to run that on the close column. All right. And I'll hang diff off the end here. Okay. So that is the typical return, right? Buy and hold. And then we're going to have a system return. Okay. And uh, this is going to depend on whether we're long or short. So we're going to take the gold signal, right? And we're going to multiply that by the return. All right. And then 
Once again, we'll take a look at what that does. Okay, so once again, right, we don't get a return for that first day because it first has to calculate, right, using the first day, what the change was. All right, so uh, here we see that the uh, under the system, right, we're basically, since we're long, it mimics right here in these first few rows anyway, the buy and hold, right? So we're long, long, long. And so if, this, if the uh, ETF goes up, we're getting that gain. If it goes down, uh, we're getting that loss. Okay, and before we move on and try to visualize what's going on here, uh, I'm going to add one more column and I'm going to call it the entry column. And essentially what I want to do is just have a uh, value show up here uh, when we change directions on our trade. So I can pretty easily do that with a calculation of the difference between rows. All right, so when we go short from being long, the difference is going to be uh, negative two. Uh, when we go long from being short, uh, the difference is going to be 2. All right, so uh, we don't actually see anything here because, right, we were already long. All right, so no difference. And then if I look far enough down in the data set, uh, the next change will be uh, we go short, and so this column will at that point show a negative 2. All right, so let's go ahead and visualize this. All right, so I pre-wrote a bunch of this code. All right, so we're going to plot a line plot for each of those three columns, the closing price, that fast-moving average, and the slow-moving average. All right, and then I'm going to plot a little uh, arrowhead, an upward-facing arrowhead that's green uh, at when that entry difference equals 2. All right, so basically I'm telling it the X and the Y here. So plot along the index when that entry equals 2, all right, and then plot on the 9-day moving average where the entry equals 2, all right? And you can move this around if you want, right? You could plot it on the closing price or any other value you wanted, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look at this. All right, and again, I just did this for the last year, so the graph is a little bit less busy, but it'll give us an idea at least of what's going on. And we can see that, all right, um, here, right, in the last year, uh, it gave us a signal to go short here and then immediately gave us a signal to go long, all right, a few days, right, short again. And then it looks like, okay, now we finally caught a trend. It told us to go long. All right, and then, right, we didn't get all of the price action, right, but uh, it, it looks like we captured quite a bit. And then it told us to go short. Again, we sort of whipsawed in here and uh, caught a pretty significant downtrend here. And then, right, this is current, the current data as of the time of this video anyway. Uh, it looks like we're sort of still looking for that direction again. All right, so that's essentially what the system looks like. Okay, so the next thing we probably want to do is to get an idea of how this system performs over the entire time frame of five years versus uh, the buy and hold strategy. All right, so I'm going to start by graphing both things. To do this, right, I'm going to call matplotlib, all right, and I'm going to plot, and I'm going to use the mp or numpy exponent, and uh, I'm going to run that on the gold return column, okay, and then I'm going to get a cumulative product there, all right, we'll label that, all right, and then I'm going to do something similar for the system return. Okay, let's take a look at the performance, and oh, I have to show the legend. Okay, so better. So the blue line is our buy and hold, and the uh, orange line here is our system, and we can see that, okay, uh, the system performs pretty flat. All right, so I, I guess we didn't expect it to be that easy. All right, but at least we have a start. We know that this doesn't work, and you know, you may think, well, if we get the signal on, you know, day 22, can't we enter on the open? And uh, I'll leave it to you to rerun this on the open, but I can just tell you in advance that the returns aren't any better. 
All right, they're very similar. Okay, and then if we just want to know what is the overall return, I'm going to copy this. All right, and um, when I'm done, I'm going to subtract away one. All right, so this is going to leave us with just the return there. And uh, actually, I want just the uh, the last day here. All right. And that, that turns out to be, it looks like the 8th of April. All right. But, uh, if I just want the single row, I'll tell it to give me just that last row. So about 36% for buy and hold versus, and again, I just want that last row minus one here versus a loss of 6%, uh, if we're using the algorithm. All right, so at least it gives you a starting place and uh, you can play around with the length of that slow and fast moving average to see if you can make something uh, that works better than this. All right, and obviously we want to outperform the buy and hold if it's going to be worthwhile. Now I'm just going to do one more thing to uh, sort of as a caution. All right, so if you remember way back at the beginning here, I rolled those moving averages forward one day, all right, so that we did not have this implied look ahead. And uh, I'm going to remove that and uh, I'm going to rerun everything. Okay, so when I rerun this with the implied look ahead, we can see that, oh, the system now vastly, or not vastly, but it significantly at least, outperforms buy and hold. But again, we can't really trade on this system uh, because we don't have that foreknowledge. All right. And then, right, the uh, the difference here, right, is one day of return for buy and hold, right, because I rolled it back one day. And then uh, it's 36.5% versus 65% uh, under this system all right, that is misleading. All right, so just be careful when you're developing these trading systems and when you're watching other tutorials that they don't imply some kind of look ahead. All right, but hopefully that'll help you get starting developing an algorithmic trading strategy.